tonight I'd like to talk to you about something pretty serious. About the subject of, of death. You know, death can come at any time. It's the ultimate statistic. Ten out of ten people die. And just this week we were reminded of that fact when a 16-year-old boy uh, here in Berry County about on Tuesday night about, about two miles north of Table Rock Lake, he was, he was driving at night around 9 o'clock, and, and he lost control of his vehicle. The vehicle skidded off and hit a rock bluff, and then, and then the car, vehicle overturned, and it threw him from the vehicle. Now, he wasn't wearing his seatbelt, and he was pronounced dead at the scene. Right there, that is proof that death can happen at any time. Death can come without warning. It can affect anyone um, without, without prejudice, you know, young or old, rich or poor. So tonight, I'd like to ask you a question. What is the most important thing in your life today? What's the most important thing in your life today? What? Your son. That's right. Most people would say their family, their spouse, their children. Maybe, maybe your work, right? Maybe, maybe your car, maybe your house, maybe your money. You know, what's the most important thing to you today? So let me ask you another question. What is, what's the most important thing on the day that you die? The most important thing on the day that you die is where you're going to spend eternity, either heaven or hell. Think of your life, you know, best case scenario, okay? Best case scenario, what do you, what do you get in this life? Maybe 60, 70, 80, 90 years top, best case, if you live a long, full life. But, you know, eternity is a long time. And if you, if you look at our life, you know, our, that's nothing in compared to eternity. In fact, you could compare our life is like a grain of sand on a beach compared to eternity. You know, it's, eternity is a long time. So, since, since you don't know when you're going to die, you should prepare for eternity today. Since you don't know when you're going to die, you should prepare for eternity today. And to help you do that, what I'd like to do is preach to you what, what has been considered by some the most important verses in the Bible, the most important verses by, that some have considered. And it's in Romans chapter 3, starting in verse 23 to 25. And here's what it says. It says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. Let me say that again. I want you to make sure you hear this. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. So tonight I'd like to explain to you how, how you can prepare for eternity today. I'd like to break those verses down in, in, into four main points, okay? Number one, to prepare for eternity, you must understand that you are a sinner. The Bible makes that very clear. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sin literally means to miss the mark. You can think, it's, it's an archer's term. You can think of, of taking a bow and arrow and pulling back an arrow and releasing it. And it's you trying to hit a bullseye within a bullseye within a bullseye within a bullseye. And the arrow falls short. You've missed the mark. That's what sin is. And the Bible makes it clear that sin is the transgression of the law. And Paul says elsewhere that Paul says elsewhere that the law is written on our heart. So a quick look at the Ten Commandments, you get to see yourself the way that we really are sinners. Ask yourself this question. How many lies do you think you've told in your entire life? Probably quite a few, right? What do you call someone that tells lies? A liar, right? Have you ever taken something that didn't belong to you? That's, that's, that's called this day, hey, right? You, Mike Seaver, can I, can I, uh... Maybe a thief, can right? Can a poem for you? It's a jailhouse poem, but it's pretty good. It's not derogatory. Not right now. When I get done, you can. Okay? Tell me about this. Have you ever used God... Like have you ever line. used, have you ever used God's name in vain? I that's called blasphemy. That's a pretty serious offense, right? In the Old Testament, they demanded the death penalty for it. Most people don't realize that God is so holy and righteous and just that He sees our thoughts. In fact, Jesus said that if you look with lust, L-U-S-T, that you've committed adultery in your heart. That's how serious God takes it. Or if you've ever been angry with someone before, hated someone before, the Bible says that he who hates his brother is a murderer. So, that, so the Bible makes it pretty clear that we've all sinned, that we've all fallen short of the glory of God, and we all got to face God on Judgment Day, and that's the way God sees us as liars, thieves, blasphemers, adulterers, and heart, okay? So number two, to prepare for eternity, you must understand that there's redemption in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ, God himself in the flesh, came to this world and lived a perfect, sinless life. 
And he went to the cross, and he died for sinners, died in our place, so we could be set free. We, we, think of this, we, we have an innumerable amount of debt that we've stored up against God with our sin. And Jesus Christ offers redemption. He buys us back through his, through his blood. Okay? Number, number three, to prepare for eternity to today, you must understand that we are justified by grace. There is absolutely nothing that you can do to earn your salvation. The Bible makes that very clear that grace is a gift from God. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace you've been saved, through faith, it is a gift of God, not of works, so that no man can boast. And we are justified through his blood. It's like this. All of our sin is put on Jesus Christ. And then his death on the cross satisfies the wrath of God. And we, it's the great exchange. We get Christ's righteousness because he fulfilled the law. He lived a perfect, sinless life. That's the great exchange. So when I die, either I pay the penalties for my sin, or I find a substitute of Jesus Christ. So we're set it. You must understand that we're justified by grace alone. Number four thing to prepare for eternity, you must understand that the work of Christ must be received through faith. You must put your trust in Jesus Christ alone because he's the only one that can save you. And, re and faith is preceded and followed by repentance. Repentance is turning away from sin. It's like you're going down the highway, you stop. You turn, you start going the other direction. Instead of living your life in rebellion to God, you submit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and you surrender to Him. So there you have it, how to prepare for eternity. Through Christ alone, we're saved by God's grace alone, through Christ alone, with faith alone in His name, right? You have to understand that you're a sinner, that there's redemption in Jesus Christ, that we're justified by His grace, and we must receive that gift through faith. So tonight I would just implore you to think about what I've said. Because the truth is, you don't know when you're going to die, and there's no second chance. When you die, that's it, heaven or hell. So the time to prepare for eternity is today. You must prepare for eternity today. So I just encourage you to think about what I've said. If, you, if there's anybody here that has any questions, I'm going to, when I finish here, just come on up and talk to me. I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. Also, if there's anyone here that would like a free Bible, I do have some free Bibles in my backpack. I'd be more than willing to give them out to anybody that would like a free Bible. Also, I have a website, bornofhim.org, bornofhim.org. And you can visit that website. If you have questions, you can email me, and i got resources on there for what it means to be a new Christian. But I appreciate you listening. Thank you very much.